Meghan, Harry and the Queen. Could there have been some sort of, shall we say, foreign of relations? Hi, good morning, Neil Sean here in the heart of London. Thank you so much as ever for joining me today. And that is one of your big breaking stories coming out of London. I don't know if you're across this particular story also. This really centers on the fact that our gracious majesty, the queen, has now finally departed from one of her favorite private homes, Sandringham in Norfolk. As you know, she was meant to spend Christmas there with her immediate family. But sadly, because of all the usual ongoing pandemic problems, the threat of Omicron and all the things that have surrounded us all, on a daily basis she couldn't go so she had to spend that privately just with a few close uh, associates and of course family in Windsor and now as I say she's gone there there's two reasons really why Her Majesty has gone to Sandringham this is normally the start of the period where she likes to reflect uh, on the year and particularly of course it is the uh, anniversary of the death of her father King George uh, she always likes to spend it there I think it is the moment where she likes to reflect and for obvious reasons if you know the history books but a very good insider tells me this particular story regarding the ex-royals Harry and Meghan and here it is. According to them, um, Her Majesty the Queen has been, shall we say, as ever, rather forgiving and wondered if Harry and Meghan would like to make something of a private visit, as ever, we have to say, allegedly. Now, this particular private visit would solve all the problems and the battles that have engulfed the ex-royal couple for the last couple of weeks, ever since we discovered, of course, that Prince Harry now wants to, uh, shall we say, get legal with the British Metropolitan Police. Ludicrous in itself, I'm sure you'll all agree. But... Uh, her Majesty the Queen, of course, in her own private estate within Sandringham, it makes perfect sense. You know, they could come along and they could introduce Her Majesty the Queen to, of course, uh, their two children, reacquaint them at least with Archie Windsor and meet for the very first time Lily Diana. Now, you can understand exactly why Harry and Meghan are very nervous to maybe offer to take up that invitation. It's rather galling in itself, isn't it? Because Think about what you did on international television worldwide. Harry's not completely stupid, you know. He would have thought, well, how is this going to play out? And meeting someone as formidable as Her Majesty the Queen, and let's not forget, it's coming up to the year when they had their cut-off option. So perhaps uh, Our Gracious Majesty had other plans to discuss also. Would have made the perfect uh, timing, would have made the perfect place, completely private, secure, and no need for that very, very expensive security call that Harry and Meghan had decided that they simply couldn't do without in order to return to the United Kingdom. Now we're not quite sure exactly where this is right now. I'm sharing this with you exclusively and for the first time. But what I do find interesting is that if they don't take this opportunity, then of course it does look bad on them because what they're basically saying is we either come with all the security, the bells and whistles, the fanfare, or we're simply not coming at all. And as we've also told you here on the show, if Prince Charles does say yes to that, then he also looks bad, even if he's funded it privately, because once again it looks like he's given in to two pet people and that won't resonate well for him as our future king and more importantly how does it really resonate for Harry and Meghan or will he simply not care as ever when I know more you'll know more Neil Sean Kensington London